everybody. Welcome back to another edition of AZ Cooks, the Instagram vibe that everyone is picking up on. I am Andrew Zimmern. This is brought to you by the good folks at Schoon Cutlery and Florida Kanya Rum, the world's most sustainable rum. Um, I have been excited about this for a long time. Sometimes we have recipes or things that I've been making a lot or that we make a lot at the studio kitchen or that are super, super popular that we just, it's not that we don't have time for them, it's just that holidays interfere, other things interfere. Um, but I, I think uh, okonomiyaki is having its, its moment in the sun. That is a Japanese pancake served famously uh, first on the streets of Osaka, and then it just sort of spread everywhere. Um, and the great thing is it's a fantastic uh, bar snack and catch-all for all kinds of ingredients. You can throw, you know, lobster and caviar in it and plus it up. You can do it with just cabbage alone, literally just cabbage in there, uh, and serve a very humble uh, okonomiyaki. Um, I have been told the proper pronunciation of that is okonomiyaki, uh, which I believe is 100% correct. It is okay if you call, that's how it's pronounced in Japan. We can say okonomiyaki, you can string it, you say it however you want, just cook it right, right? I mean, we wanna be respectful to other cultures, but it's trying that is the most important thing uh, of all. It, it's really rather uh, simple. I wanna talk about a couple ingredients because then this is gonna come together rather quickly. Um, this is flour, this is baking powder. Together, you can find them and sometimes it already has powdered egg in it, these uh, okonomiyaki flours that are available online. You, you just read the, the ingredients in the back of the package about what you're supposed to add to them. Um, I make mine from scratch because it's just so easy to do so, right? Um, I'm, I have here some dashi that's gonna be my liquid in that pancake, much in the same way if I'm making Swedish pancakes or American pancakes, I would add uh, uh, dairy from that. Um, I'm putting bean sprouts in mine and shizo leaf and some julienne uh, kimchi and my meat ground shrimp. You don't need to put any meat at all. This could be a wonderful vegetarian dish uh, if you like. Um, one of my other favorite things to add to it, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do it today because we have enough going on, especially with the kimchi, um, is these are pickled mustard greens, um, which are one of the most all-purpose, uh, this happens to be a Chinese brand, uh, but one of the most all-purpose uh, ingredients in all of Asian cooking, whether you're tilting things, Thai, Japanese, Vietnamese, Cambodian, Chinese, uh, it does not matter. They all have versions of this. And in fact, even snipping a little and putting as a garnish on stuff, I have 20 different types of pickles all in jars and containers of mine at home. And we, we assembled some to sort of show you. There's, you can use pickled cucumbers uh, on yours. Uh, these are Japanese. Um, these, are some, these are some hot bamboo shoots. Uh, these are Chinese. Um, these, uh, these are Taiwanese. This is uh, pickled radish. Um, all of that kind of pickled vegetable uh, adds a piquancy and a contrast to the sweet, hot, sort of savory tones of the okonomiyaki. Um, but I think with the kimchi, we're gonna have enough in there. I may decide when I'm garnishing that I was wrong and I feel like putting something on there and we'll open one of those up. We are also, going to be using uh, the traditional uh, bulldog sauce that is also eaten, well, it's put on tonkatsu all the time, which is a pounded pork cutlet. Uh, typically, vendors in uh, Osaka have used this sauce uh, with a little bit of dashi in it just to make it a little looser and done that and kewpie mayo in a crosshatch pattern and then put uh, these wonderful toasted, shaved, smoke dried bonito flakes on there. Sounds complex, they're available everywhere. Not just Asian markets, but now uh, hanakatsuo like this is available in the, uh, God, I hate this term, the ethnic food aisle of your neighborhood supermarket. That's what they call it, not what I call it. Um, and a little bit of nori, uh, sea laver. Seaweed, you've all seen that in sushi bars, also available in every supermarket in America. It goes to show you how far we've come. Um, and you can garnish it with a lot of things. Some people judge okonomiyaki by what goes into it. Some judge okonomiyaki by what goes on top of it. 
right? It's, it's one of those things, because to some it's just a pancake. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my baking powder and my salt into my big bowl here, and then I'm going to add my flour. Why do I do that? Well, I wanna make sure that my salt and my baking powder are evenly distributed throughout my pancake. That way I don't have to over whisk and put too much air into it when I add my dashi. It also in a way sort of helps to sort of sift the flour without sifting it, right? So it's, it's literally that simple. Um, once I make my batter, I'm going to add my other ingredients. Well, let me get this cabbage out of the way. Um, if I am putting in cabbage, you get a longer knife. If I am putting in cabbage, my search for a longer knife continues. If I am putting, there we go. If I am putting in cabbage uh, from the back half of the Napa cabbage head, I'll usually give it a quick saute and then cool it before putting it in my batter because I have these big pieces of crispy, watery uh, spine. It's delicious, it just has a lot of moisture in it. So if you put it in the batter, it can throw it off. Uh, typically, what I do is I will remove just the tip there and then just get a few cups of julienne. You know, you don't have to go so crazy thin, but the heat of cooking the cabbage Oh, I, I misstated that. The heat of cooking that pancake is gonna wilt the cabbage. So that's going to be plenty and it's all tender and young, right? We have none of those spines. So that is going to disappear into our pancake, but it's not gonna get overcooked. It'll still give you a nice little uh, sort of crunch uh, in there. So next thing that I wanna do one egg, followed by one egg yolk. Now here's the deal. Some people are more comfortable combining all liquid ingredients, all dry ingredients, and then combining. If you've been doing this kind of thing for a while, you will note to just do the, the well in the middle trick, right? My egg is beaten and I just whisk together and I add my dashi, usually in thirds, right? And I don't want to overwork this. I guess I'm adding in quarters, but it all comes together. And just like pancake mix, those lumps that you see in there, we don't need to over mix this to get the lumps out. You just need to let it sit. There's the rest of our dashi. And what do I mean by sit? Sometimes you just let it sit for 90 seconds, two minutes, and it smooths out. Uh, my recipe is super, super tight, and we're gonna get a chance for more of those little lumps to disappear. Those little lumps are just clusters of flour. They hydrate in there. As you can see, the batter's not super thick. All right, so what do we want to season that with? Well, we have enough salt. I'm gonna hold back a tablespoon of that scallion. I wanna put the scallion in. I wanna put the shizo in there. So I have shizo leaf, perilla leaf, uh, goes by a lot of different names. And even though they're small, I want them to spread in there. I want to get bites of shizo everywhere. So I'm just going to cut those up very coarsely with my kitchen shear and mix those in. You know, when people say, oh, well, let's, let's put, I would put fresh chilies in here, but I probably want to season it with something spicy on top. I, I, I don't really need to flavor the whole pan. I, I want to make a, a pancake where those subtle vegetable flavors uh, sort of come out a little more. Um, shrimp, we're going to cook this enough that these ground or finely chopped shrimp are going to turn beautiful pink and add another saline quality. 
to this. We cook this pancake all the way through. There's not going to be any raw seafood in there. Then I'm going to add my kimchi. Squeeze out any more of that juice that comes in there. And I'm just going to, at this point, switch to a spatula because we're starting to get ingredients enough in there that it's going to start to clog my whisk. But my job with the whisk is done. What do I mean by that? All those little lumps are gone. Everything is nicely incorporated in there. Some people like to add this halfway through and then add more batter. I've done it both ways. If you fold gently, I don't see anything wrong with doing it this way. Never have. I don't break my bean sprouts, my pancake batter, by folding it and letting it fall through that cabbage. And this is basically what you wanna, what you wanna see there. Can I? Add a little more cabbage, sure. Add a little more cabbage. You really want the appearance of this to be vegetables and ingredients bound together by batter. And do you see what I mean by that? See how it's, it looks like a vegetable mess, like making egg foo young. You don't want it to be egg with a little bit of stuff in it. The whole point is to have all this stuff just bound together by the pancake. And that looks just about perfect. I'm gonna rinse my hand. Are there any other vegetables you'd add to this? Oh my gosh, the world is your oyster. Try not to add things that have too much moisture. I mean, if you added tomato, cucumbers, and peppers, it would kind of turn a little too moist. Uh, leafy things are great if they have moisture in them, and certainly cabbage does, bean sprouts do, uh, they tend to give off very little of it. And we're gonna cook this just to the point of being done. If you were going to add, I've done this with a spicy ground, leftover spicy ground pork or beef uh, dishes that I've cooked in the Japanese style. Um, I do that with uh, already cooked and cooled product. I don't put the raw in there because we're not gonna cook it that long. Um, but yeah, you can, the world is your oyster here. There's a lot of things, if they have moisture on it, like radishes, fresh radishes, you want fresh radishes, julienne them on top, right? So you get that crunchy, spicy radish flavor. Uh, I usually tend to make this, I will do mushrooms, like shiitakes, super thinly sliced, super thinly sliced or cooked ones uh, that I have, um, uh, already thinly sliced. So let's just clean this up a little bit. We have our garnish here. I want to make sure all my tops are ready to go because there's nothing worse than going to garnish your okonomiyaki, especially with things like kewpie mayo and bulldog sauce and not have them readily available to you. Really nice peanut or rapeseed oil. I have preheated, I know that seems like a lot of oil, it's only about two, two and a quarter tablespoons, and you are going to be turning this pancake. I am raising it up to in between medium and high. And once I smell that a little more, I'll start to add uh, my batter to it. The magic garnish here for me while that's heating up is this stuff right here, separate recipe on our website. Uh, it is one of my chef's secret ingredients. This is stuff that I keep at home in a tub. I sprinkle it on everything. People are like, holy shit, why is that dish so great? It's because this spicy macadamia nut crumble that has macadamia nuts, sesame, seaweed, chilies, fermented dried shrimp is just like an umami bomb of flavor that I sprinkle on everything and is a little secret to a lot of the yummy flavor of my cooking. By the way, you can see this makes one big pancake because this will flatten out 
sufficient to fill this 10 inch pan, right? If you have a smaller pan, you, you can certainly just divide this in half or make thinner pancakes. I don't. I like to make a bigger pancake, cut it in squares, serve it with toothpicks, that kind of thing, or let people cut wedges out of them and share it. So once I'm at this place, I just put this into my pan. Don't worry about the shape when it goes in. What we care about is the shape when it comes out. So just by gently pressing, don't squeeze, don't break stuff. Don't, you know, it's kind of like meatballs or hamburger patties. They always say the more you press it, uh, the worse the texture is. That's true. Same with okonomiyaki. Just have it be natural. We can see that frying away. We have a nice sizzle, so I am not worried about absorption of oil, right? You, the reason we wait till we smell that oil and we can start to see it ripple and smile, as we like to say, is so that we know it's hot enough to start frying right away. If it's too hot, you burn or scorch your pancake right away. Right? And unlike American style flapjacks where everyone says, oh, the second batch is better because everything is heated through, this is going to cook for six, seven, eight minutes on the side, right? So we don't have to worry about that. Um, we actually have a different worry. We don't want it to burn. We don't want it to be too hot. As long as it's frying away, that thermal momentum is just going to grow in the pan. And as the pancake goes from being raw, to being cooked on one side, and we are gonna wait for it basically to almost cook all the way through uh, before we turn it. We will use two spatulas to do that. Um, do not try to impress your friends. Just because you can do this and pop a pancake up doesn't mean you should. There is going to be residual oil there, and it is either gonna go all over your counter or all over your kid or your dog or your cat, but almost as bad as hurting someone else. If you're alone and it comes back down into that pan and there is oil in it, it goes only one direction, right up your arm. So best to do this safely. You do not need two pans to do this. Kick this up one notch and we might lower that as we start to see that cook. But this, oh, you can smell how beautiful that is. And remember, I don't need salt and pepper right now. We're, we have so many salty, peppery components in here, and we have salty, peppery components that we're putting onto uh, that pancake when it comes out as a garnish that there's no need to. Something really important. What are we going to serve it on? Mm, not quite, right? It works, but we don't have full plate coverage. So we want to do one notch bigger than that on a plate. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you, Madeline. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is my okonomiyaki, do we have anything that's just a little bit bigger? This is better. By the way, I have put these on uh, little cake stands before because then you can put it in the middle of the table, put other dishes around it, cut it into squares and people can share it. God, I love the smell of this. Anyway, we can use this, and if we find a bigger plate, we will put it uh, on there. Maybe one of our plates up, uh, oh, did you find one? Hey. Mandeline found one, of course she found one. Uh, questions while this is cooking? Comments, criticisms, concerns? What's the difference between uh, QP mayo and the mayo you find in? Uh, sugar is in QP mayo, MSG is in QP mayo. Uh, how they uh, they use some food chemistry to uh, <laughs> solubilize it and liaise it. It's not all natural egg yolks and oil. Um, but the thing about QP mayo is that it's absolutely delicious and addictive. Um, if you have not tried, and by the way, the label comes attached to the plastic that holds this down. Otherwise, I would I would let you see it. But 
well, it's too hard to see, but it's the label that has the little baby uh, on it. Um, there is, it, to my mind, a QP, oh, look at that. It's this stuff, right? It has vinegar, it has vegetable oil, it has eggs, just like any other mayonnaise, but it also has a little extra vinegar, MSG, and what they call spices, and some of those spices are uh, sugar-related. They're sweet. All right. Once I see this happening, I'm going to turn this down now to just below medium-high. What am I talking about? In the amount of time while we were talking, if you look around the edges, you can see it starting to brown. And I can smell it starting to brown. And then when I do this, you see it moving as one. And you, you can almost watch it starting to cook around the edges and move in towards the center. We are going to wait to flip this until it is more stable. Right now it is not stable to flip. But boy, is that absolutely perfect looking. So we just turned it down because we don't want to scorch it. Sorry, I interrupted you while you were talking about uh, questions. What is bulldog sauce? <laughs> bulldog sauce is this stuff right here. Um, it has sugar. It has tomatoes and vinegar, and it has apple puree. It's got uh, yeast extracts, uh, which give it that incredible uh, umami flavor. Uh, it has uh, plum and other fruits in there. It is, uh, it's got cooked carrots and onions that are pureed. It's kind of like a cross between ketchup and Worcestershire sauce. And if you've ever been, I mean, when I taste it, if I had to describe it, it's a cross between ketchup and Worcestershire, uh, Worcestershire sauce. Um, it, most people are familiar with it either with okonomiyaki or tonkatsu, which is a breaded fried pork cutlet. And if you've had either in Japan or in a Japanese restaurant, you know exactly the sauce that I am talking about. If you like to cook Japanese food, it's a pantry item that you sort of need to have around. I mean, just like having uh, light soy and dark soy and uh, ingredients like kombu and hanakatsuo, these fish flakes to make dashi, those are the things that you need. If you have those, you know, mirin and sake, you can make so many different Japanese dishes because cabbage and mushrooms and eggs and flour and baking powder is not germane just to Japanese cooking. It's available in so many different cultures and popular in many cultures. So, yes, next one. Where did you learn to make this? Uh, where did I learn to make it? I learned to make this by watching people on the streets of Osaka. Um, and I thought to myself, well, I wonder if that pancake mix is any different, because they'd make 10, 12, 14 different uh, uh, okonomiyaki portions at a time, and then you'd see them dump measures of egg and flour and et cetera, and I'm like, well, the way the texture is, it's gotta have something that makes it rise a little, and it's not yeast, it's gotta be baking powder. Um, then I came back uh, to the States, and this is probably, I don't know, 15, 16 years ago, and probably uh, one of Tadashi Ono's uh, books or uh, some of the other, uh, you know, Shiroko Himbo or some of the, the other first generation of English uh speaking English writing Japanese chefs that wrote those first sort of primers for Japanese cooking, uh, I looked up a recipe and then just started tweaking it. What I, I did not see, I, I will tell you, I, I still to this day, I see octopus and other things in here. In all of my sort of journeys around, no one has ever put shrimp in there, but I always have bags in my freezer that have like five or six shrimp that were left over from some like measured recipe that are raw and frozen. Um, or I have like uh, five, six ounces of uh, uh, dumpling or gyoza filling th that has pork and shrimp in it left over. And I just started throwing those into my okonomiyaki. Yes. 
speaking of proteins, so those are some of the proteins you could add to this? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing that you can't add uh, to this. And, uh, anything works in the seafood category except uh, salted anchovies or bucarones. Well, bucarones you could probably get away with as a garnish because they've got that acidic quality that some of these pickles do. Um, but I would stick with something simple at first, leftover shredded chicken, shrimp, uh, ground cooked and seasoned pork. Um, it, it's, it, you know, some people put a little grated ginger and garlic in their batter. You know, go at it. But like so many other recipes, before you start, if you've never made it before, just do this first. And Or if you don't have all those ingredients, subtractions are better. Before you start adding things in, because then you got to figure out if it didn't work, why didn't it work? Was it something that had too much water in it? Like, don't put tomatoes in. It just falls apart, right? Makes sense? All right, this is almost getting ready to flip. How do I know that? I can start to see this firming up enough around the edges and setting there that I can see it starting to bubble through and set. And like any other pancake making, do you see those little bubbles there? We're waiting to see a couple more of those as it's starting to heat up and cook from the other side before we, oh, we just had one right there. Do you see that little, just watch for it. It'll probably happen again right there. Of course, the minute I call it out, it doesn't happen. No, it's about, I think it's about to happen right where my finger is. Of course, it'll happen somewhere else now, but you start to see these little pops of cooking in steam as the pancake is cooking through just like a traditional uh, American flapjack. So you sort of want to wait before you flip that. What do you miss most about Japan? What do I miss most about Japan? The people. It's always about people. I mean, the world is not made up of, you know, late night food stalls serving okonomiyaki. The world is made up of people. And the Japanese people are so reverent of their culture, so excited to share it. Um, the, the, the Japan of old, when I visited for the first time, is so much different than Japan today, which is a much more open society. Uh, still closed in small villages and in the far north or the far south, but in the big cities, explosively modern, super kinky and fun. I mean, if you like to go out and explore nightlife of any kind, go to Tokyo and tell me that's not one of the most exciting cities in the world. Rock and roll clubs, punk rock clubs, folk clubs that open at two in the morning. Discos, nightclub discos, I'm dating myself. Nightclubs, dance clubs, raves that are insane. 3,000 people in a warehouse going absolutely bonkers. Um, restaurants where everyone is dressed up like, like school kids serving you, men and women. Uh, restaurants where everyone is dressed up as plushy animals serving you. I mean, it is one of the most incredible cultures uh, from high and low, traditional to non-traditional. I absolutely love the Japanese passion for living and art. Now, one of the reasons that you want to resist the temptation to flip is how stiff this pancake gets because of the ratio of egg to flour, the dashi, etc. You can sort of see in this as I start to tilt it, it's stiff enough to hold together, right? Doesn't fall apart, doesn't break. That's telling me we're almost ready to get a spatula underneath there and flip it. I, I can, if this was an American pancake and a little smaller, I would flip this sucker for you and you'd all go, oh, wow. Um, it, it, that just takes practice. I mean, it's, it's not that hard, actually. I'm sure most of you could do it. The issues here is that we have a really brittle, crispy texture on the outside and the thickness, right? So, what do you want to turn it with? Spatula like this, right, makes the most sense? Absolutely not. Why is this a problem? That. So you can get under this, but then when you start to turn it, the fact that this is bent there means you have a higher percentage chance of it breaking or cracking, right? You see that? It's flat here, but it's only going this far underneath it. 
If I had a second one, I might do it and do something like that. But what you're looking for, and you can certainly use something that has a lower slope to it. This one isn't as extreme, but you have the same. You could do this, right? Lift it up and flip it. Or you can use a big long fish spatula like this and flip it. That's yummy. I would say that's nearly perfect. We just want it to crisp up on that other side. Nice and crispy here. You don't, this is dark, dark brown. Brown is the color of flavor. Um, I like that little scorch there. It's not blackened, it's not carbonized. If it was, you would smell it. But that is, that is just stunning. And then you don't need to flip it again. You can just slide it out uh, onto your platter. We want to make sure that, remember we have shrimp in here and the batter in the pancake is thick. So we just want it to cook for a couple more minutes and then like magic, we, we garnish and eat. Another question while we're waiting? Can you make these smaller? You can make them smaller. Uh, I have seen both here in this country and in Japan, uh, okonomiyaki made in those small little round uh, uh, octopus ball uh, devices. I've seen them done in little spoonfuls where people get five or six on a plate and usually there's a little uh, table with garnishes where people can garnish their own stuff. Um, so you certainly can. I like to serve this, like if you did a, a, a Japanese noodle dish and maybe you did a Japanese soupy thing or you were doing some uh, donburi bowls of some kind or chicken teriyaki and, uh, on a platter. You put this out and you put a sharp knife next to it and let people cut a piece for themselves. Um, a lot of times you'll see with okonomiyaki that is like six or eight inches individual size, they'll actually cut across three or four times in each direction so you have squares and they serve it with a toothpick and let you uh, eat it. The world is your oyster when it comes to this. Oysters, speaking of oysters, uh, I do make this with oyster a lot. It's fantastic. Just make sure they're really well drained. As a Minnesotan, are you afraid of taking the last piece when you serve this? What a great question, Abby. Uh, no. As a New Yorker, if there are six people at the table and eight slices, I take three for myself so someone gets screwed. <laughs> no, of course not. People, Minnesotans, by the way, uh, we do a couple of things really poorly. Uh, number one is looking out for ourselves most because we're always looking out for someone else. Um, we also spend too much time on our front porches waving goodbye as people exit our homes. Oh, this is going to be so, so, so good. What is one of Luca's favorite treats? Uh, Luca's favorite treat is to have a Kong stuffed with yogurt, peanut butter, and bananas thrown into the freezer for a couple of hours to freeze it, and then we put it in his crate when we, he goes in there, or if we're really being generous, we'll let him just eat it in the kitchen. You don't have to worry about him, like, taking it somewhere, like the carpet to make it, right, you know, to, because he, he's so excited about it. Uh, anything that uh, I'm carving on the table excites him. Uh, he is a garbage bag, is essentially what he is when it comes to food. I've, I've never, everyone says this about their dog, oh, my dog will eat everything, it's just we can't leave anything alone. This dog is a hoover. It's really sick. <laughs> Super cute, but the guy will eat anything. It's embarrassing. Have you ever made gourmet dog treats? No, but I do make his uh, food for him uh, frequently. Um, I, I never wanted to be in a position where I fed a dog the same thing for so long that any dietary change results in uh, intestinal issues. So every couple, you know, after a month of his kibble, we go to a week of the homemade dog food that I make with rice and vegetables and ground meat. And then I just pulse it in the food processor and put it in bags, you know, 
half cup portions, freeze it, and then you just pulse it in the microwave just to warm it through and dump it in his bowl. He loves it. And we also have done it when um, he has had to, uh, you know, when he got snipped or when he had his tooth fixed, stuff like that, where, you know, you want them on a easier to digest diet. My son and I also just feed him hamburgers right off the table. There is our okonomiyaki. And here is my favorite part of serving the okonomiyaki. The dance of the fish flakes from the heat. I don't know, I just think that's so pretty. I never tire of it. And young people are amazed by it. It's just the heat convection and those, those thin cutlets are, or those thin shavings are so thin. Um, so this is the traditional back and forth of the bulldog sauce. I only go one way with the QP. People want more QP, they mayonnaise they can. And then the last thing that I do, or I guess second to last, is my spicy nut crumble. and then some of the sea laver. Now, look, you know, I have these things around and I love to serve this all the time. Um, if you don't want to put that many things on your okonomiyaki, by all means, don't. Um, but I always have them lying around. I mean, half those garnish, well, all those garnishes, except for the scallions, are in my house 24-7, 365, because I like to cook a lot of this food. You do need a very, very, very sharp knife, right? So the idea here, and I don't want to ruin this because Madeline will get so mad at me about pictures. You know, she's going to want to take a picture of the whole thing. So I'm going to take a slice out of this. Like a little pie wedge. That means, good morning, may I have some dumplings? No. Uh, that is okonomiyaki uh, perfection. Cooked all the way through, still moist. How do I know it's cooked all the way through? No loose batter, all pink shrimp. You can see them in there. It's hot. So ridiculously good. This is the stuff that is eaten at three in the morning when you are absolutely blotto coming out of a great club in Osaka or Tokyo or any other big Japanese city. It is the stuff that you eat at the end of a long night of drinking at an izakaya. I don't even drink anymore. And it reminds me of the best parts of stumbling home after a night that exists in your memory as one of the best you've ever had. Um, this is late night stoner food of the gods. I'm not really sure there's a better treat on earth than a good okonomiyaki. So thank you for being with us today for this episode of Instagram Live, AZ Cooks. Thank you, Florida Kanya Rum. Thank you, Shun Cutlery. Um, it's a Japanese dish, so I hope all the people at Shun really like this. Um, it is spectacular. I, I know this looks complex. It's really simple. It's a vegetable pancake. Please try it. Go home, make this dish. The next time you're thinking of what I want to make for a party, make this. Sporting event, make this. People at your house for a card game, make this. Book club, make this. Enjoy. Be kind to one another. Thank you.